Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to do this past week's um, pickups. This week's pickups were from Wednesday to Sunday. Um, I had been doing about a week and a half because I was getting a little bit behind, but I'm going to try to get this video out every Monday um, for the seven days before. So this is from Wednesday to Sunday. I actually found stuff every single day by going to different flea markets. Um, we'll start with go by day by day through this stack. This is everything. Um, to run through the numbers really quick. Total, I spent $943 before tax. And in my state, the sales tax is 6%. So they got us to $999.58. So almost right at $1,000 for all this stuff. We'll talk about why I bought what I did, uh, my intentions for it. Some of the stuff I plan to keep um, longer term. And some of the stuff is going to be graded. Some is going to sell right away. So we'll start with it. We'll move this out of the way so we don't spoil anything. Okay, so we'll move this to right there. So to start, this was Wednesday's pickup. On Wednesday, we spent $126. Um, we got I got this J.R. Smith rookie uncirculated tops card at a $5.99. It was a whole two bucks. I think I seen one sell for like five, six bucks on eBay. It's something I'll throw out at a card show in one of the boxes for three, four, five bucks, you know, something like that, just to make a few dollars on. Because again, it's not always about, you know, the huge dollar amount. It's about making percentages. Um, this is interesting. This was $10. I actually sold a super, super short print Nico Horner PSA 10 recently. And right after I sold that, he got called up. He's been playing amazing for the Cubs, amazing defense, I mean, gold glove caliber defense, and he's hitting over 300 at last check. Um, this was 10 bucks, and the 2021, which is the second year, numbered out of 99 Inception Auto, was doing like 30 to 50. So the rookie, the last one sold before the season, before he was called up, and it sold fairly cheap. But considering the 2020, same card, not a rookie, or the 2021, excuse me, same card, not a rookie, is doing 30 to 50. I think this has got to be like 60 to 80 bucks based on recent comps. So that'll be good. It looks perfect, so it might be something I grade. But then again, you know, if I could make $40, $50 on spending 10 real fast, that might be something just to make the money on. Here's a Tony Gonzalez rookie. So, you know, easily, um, arguably the best tight end of all time you know, up there, obviously, and uh, this was 20. His cards are surprisingly cheaper than you would think for being pretty low population. This is off-center, top to bottom, as you can see, pretty bad. Left to right's not bad. The back centering is actually pretty good. It's just the left to right is off. I think it'll get a nine. Nines actually only go for like 75, 80 bucks, and for being a pretty low population card, I was kind of surprised by that, but I got it for 20, so put 25 into grade at 45. You know, there's some room there, but most likely it'll be something I'll hold because I just think his stuff is undervalued. Here's a Christian McCaffrey Optic Hollow Rookie. This one I paid a little bit more than I wanted for because I wasn't originally going to grade it. Um, I still might grade it. I don't know. I think it sh has a good shot at a 10. I don't see anything wrong with the card. Um, I think they go for like 50 to 80 raw. It was just more one of those things. The more you get, I feel like the better deals you can get. So I was going to grade it. I don't know. I might just turn around and sell it for the 70 bucks. Maybe we'll see. Because I think Sam Darnold's going to do well there. I think he, I think the Jets really messed him up. You know, like I feel like he could have been really good there if they would have drafted assets around him and kept him and traded that pick for multiple receivers or an offensive line to have around him. But we'll see how, see how it goes for him in Carolina. And this is a Kyle Lowry rookie. So just a Topps rookie. You know, his stuff is really cheap. Like, I think I got this for two or three bucks. I don't know. I got both of these. The CJ McCollum, I think it was the CJ McCollum, I think was three. And the Kyle Lowry, I believe, was two. And it's just, you know, the way they've been playing. Kyle Lowry has a ring. I don't know if he'll get another one. But if he keeps up the same career he's had at this point, you know, there's going to be fans of the Raptors that want his rookie card, and I thought both of these looked perfect that they should both grade 10s. So getting this for $2 and this for $3, and I mean, CJ McCollum averages, you know, 23, 24 points a game for the last couple seasons, and their team is 
pretty insane this year, and they you never know. They never know what can happen. I don't think they'll win at all, obviously. But, I mean, if he ever gets a ring on his resume with the points he averages, especially if he could do it in Portland with Damian Lillard, I feel like his cards are pretty cheap. So paying $5 total for those two is kind of a oh, no-brainer. Grade them. They get a 10 and sell them at the right time. This I kind of just bought. Heck of it, it's a Kevin Garnett Premier rookie, I believe. Uh, it was like Premier Prospects rookie. I think it was also two or three bucks. I don't remember which one was two and three. Uh, that's really all that it goes for. Maybe like five, six bucks. But just being Kevin Garnett early card, thought it was something worth it. This one was a Dirk Nowitzki Stadium Club rookie. This was only five bucks, and it looks super clean. Like, say it has a transit grading of ten. I don't know what tens go for. I know we're all. I think it was doing like fifteen, twenty ish, um, which again to me feels cheap for you know first ballot Hall of Famer. So. Got a Don of a Mitchell Contenders Rookie of the Year. I just thought it was a good card. It was ten dollars, a little bit more than I wanted to pay, but they go for a little bit more than that. You know, fifteen bucks, I believe. Just being a good looking card, I figured it would sell pretty easy, or maybe something to grade if they do well in the playoffs. I'm a twenty eighteen Topps Chrome Sepi Refractor of Mike Trout. That was ten bucks. It was perfect condition. You know, any. Any parallel of Mike Trout from Topps Chrome is going to be a decent card, especially if it grades well. And so that might be one I grade and it, you know, end up being a $100 card or so. We'll see. Um, this was a Tiger Woods rookie. These cards, if you follow along, I mean, they got huge a few months back and they came down. But still, this one was raw for only $5 and it should grade a 9 I would say it has a chance at a 10. There's just the tiniest speck of white on this top left corner, so that would probably make it a 9. Um, I don't know if it's worth grading at a 9. I know the population's pretty high, so I don't know if it's worth grading at a 9, but I felt like for 5 bucks, let me buy it and see. And then Haley Deegan. Um, if you don't think about NASCAR, her stuff is really expensive, even though she hasn't really proven much yet. I think she's going to be pretty good. She's just in the truck series, which is like the third level tier series. So she's got a ways to go before she's in the top series, but this is a 3D Goodwins Champions card. It's not worth a whole lot more than I paid for it. I paid two bucks. They go for like five, ten bucks. A couple is a little cheaper, but it's something to either grade or hold. And, you know, even if I sell it for five bucks, you know, you double your money, essentially. So that was on Wednesday's pickups. So we'll set those right here. All right, this was Thursday's pickup. So on Thursday, I got all this for $110. This was a Ray Allen Upper Deck Little Relic. It was only two bucks, and it literally goes for about two to three bucks. But I like Ray Allen, and I felt like, hey, I'll put four or five bucks on it. If it sells for four or five bucks, great. If not, it's something I like. Um, this was two bucks, a Von Miller rookie winning a Super Bowl with Denver. You know, some players, their stuff's just cheap when they're really one of the best players of their position so I felt like two bucks you know it might only be a four or five dollar card but it's about percentages so a JJ Watt procedure rookie this was also two bucks and this I think can grade a 10 I don't know if it's something to grade or not I don't know how to price you know non-quarterbacks and like you know the best of all time with their position I don't know how to price those so him being one of the best players at his position all time I would imagine this should hold more value than two bucks, so picked it up. Same thing with this, Adrian Peterson. This was also, this one might have been a dollar, actually. It was a one or two dollars. Um, yeah, it was also a super clean copy. So, you know, I mean, you're only going to make a dollar to a piece on those. This one was three bucks, a Dan Marino tops insert from 95, I believe. Yeah. Um, I think the last one of these sold for 13 bucks, and it's a super sick card. This kind of team bag makes it look not as shiny, but that foil really pops. So, you know, we'll make five, six bucks on that. Uh, here's a Kevin Porter Jr. Revolution rookie. This was also, I believe, two or three. This one might have been three. I just thought it was a cool looking card, and after he had that 50 point game a few weeks back, you know, his stuff, you never know. So, for a few bucks to throw it in a box, and if he continues to be good. We'll see where it goes. Here's two that I just picked up because Ryan Tannehill, he's kind of like a good quarterback. He is above average, but he's never going to be one of the best quarterbacks, but he consistently wins games. 
and consistently performs pretty well and gets a seam to the playoffs the last few years with the Titans. So this was five bucks and it looked perfect and it's just a top scrum rookie. His stuff is low population and you never know, you know, if the Titans somehow can win it all, what his cards could do. And this is the X Fractor. This one was 10 bucks and that one was five. So I felt like for 15 bucks total, I couldn't pass up low pop. I mean, like, we don't know that Joe Burrow or Tua or Jalen Hurts is going to be any better than Ryan Tannehill, and their stuff goes for a ton more. So it was like 15 bucks. You know, I think I could sell them for 25 total if I sold them raw, or they potentially grade them. Let's see, here's some speculative plays. I'll show all four of these at once. So these three were five, and this one was 10. And I felt like uh, LaVisca Chenault Jr. is a decent receiver, and considering they got uh, Trevor Lawrence in the draft, and then you never know what can happen with Tim Tebow, Urban Meyer being a new coach. You know, what if he has a huge season with them? So I felt like these are already going for about 10 apiece, and I think this one's going for like 12 to 15, and they all look like they would have a fairly decent shot at grading a 10. They all look perfect. So... I don't know if I'll grade them. I'll most likely just turn around and sell them for 15, 20 bucks a piece, maybe, or I might sell three of them for 10 bucks a piece and keep the best one, right? And that way it ends up being free, something like that. I'm a Chase Young, red, white, and blue prism. Also, again, like this card looked perfect and it was five bucks. I think it goes for maybe seven to 10 bucks, nothing huge, but I think Chase Young could be one of the best players at his position, you know, like ever. Just Obviously, health is a big concern with that, but the dude's a monster. So for five bucks, a prism rookie parallel picked it up. Here is a Tua Mystique Illusions Clear, and it's numbered out of 149. If you can see that, I didn't see any of these on eBay listed or sold. But the out of 399 was doing like 30 bucks, and this was I believe 10. I'll have to look at the receipt. I'm pretty sure this was 10 bucks. So I feel like for 10 bucks. The out of three ninety nine, it was doing thirty. The out of one forty nine's got to at least be forty bucks. So, got that for ten. Um, this one was five bucks, and it's not perfect, and it's probably only worth about ten bucks. But a lot some of these sold for twenty twenty five, and the condition is pretty bad. This one's also got a few chips like die cuts. You know, have quite often. See that one right there is pretty bad. The rest of these aren't really bad at all. And I feel like five bucks, it's something you could pick up. And if I could sell it for 10, if not, I'll keep it because I'm a Boston Sports fan. This was a Topps Chrome Raphael Devers rookie. It was also five. This is probably worth five or maybe even less. But I'm a fan of his, and he's having a monster year. And compared to Ronald Acuna and um, Juan Soto from the same year, his numbers are comparable. And I feel like the Red Sox being as good as they are this year, this is worth five bucks, kind of a play. And then here's probably, I guess, two of the better cards from that day. I got this from 10, for 10 bucks. It's off center, right? But otherwise, it's in excellent condition. Like, hardly any white. I think there's a little bit of white right there. And the, other than that, there's no white corners, no wrinkles in the sticker, nothing. It's just off center. So for 10 bucks, I think if, you know, if we sell it for 20 bucks, 25 bucks, it's pretty good. And then this one actually looked perfect. I didn't see anything wrong with it. It might be the ever so slightly off center left to right, but this one was 20 and they, I think they do about double that in this condition. So I picked it up for 20 bucks and we'll see what happens with it. Sorry, the lighting in here is a little off today. I'm going to have to change some bulbs. All right. But there is a couple cards in here I overpaid and there's a reason I overpaid, which I'll explain. Here's one of them that I did overpay on is this one. So a couple of these have went for like one to one fifty on eBay, but a lot of them do. It's about a sixty to seventy five dollar card. I did pay the full hundred bucks for this. I get a lot of stuff from this individual. Obviously all this stuff you're seeing so far is from them that and I get it undervalued and I'm gonna make a lot of money off the individual. So I felt like it was fair for me to get this for the full asking price they had on it because it was a super clean copy. I didn't see anything wrong with it. It's probably something I'm just going to keep in the collection. It's probably nothing I'm going to sell. King Griffey Jr. is one of my few favorite players of all time, so I'm going to probably just keep that and have a clean copy of it because I don't really want to pay 
thousands for a 10 when the 9 and 10 population is really high. Um, I got this Dwight Freeney rookie out of $9.99. This was a whole two bucks. It actually sells for like 10 bucks. And being I'm in the Indianapolis area, and like the big team around here is the Colts or the Titans. And kind of right in the middle of Cincinnati, Indianapolis, and uh, Tennessee. So, yeah, um, I think I'll be able to sell that at a card show for 7 to 10 bucks. Um, a Luke Keekley auto. This was a whole five dollars. It's not in perfect condition, but numbered out of seven forty nine. Probably one of the what top two or three Carolina Panthers players ever, and a rookie auto. And his stuff. That's really all it's worth. It's really cheap. I just feel like that's undervalued. His stuff should be more. You know, a lot of times players at that position at linebacker don't get huge values when they should. You know, it's crazy. This next card goes for more than that. I paid 25 for this, which I think is crazy, but sometimes you got to look at that weird stuff, right? There's an egg in Allen and Ginter that's like Kylie Jenner's rookie card, apparently, and it goes for a bunch, and this cryptocurrency card's kind of the same way. This sells for like 70 bucks on eBay ungraded. It looks like it would grade a 10. I don't know if I'm going to grade it yet, but I paid 25 for it raw, which I think is crazy, but people like the odd stuff like that. And then I got this for 50 It's probably worth 60 maybe a little bit more, but it looked perfect. It's a number out of 99 cat rookie. I'm in Kentucky, so it will sell well here, and I will most likely grade it and be able to make a little bit of money off of it because I do think it will grade a 10, and it's almost impossible to get these thick cards to grade a 10. All right, let's move on to the next day. So this is, let's see, that was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. This was Saturday. So Saturday, I bought these two. Um, I bought both of these for 80 bucks. They're the Topps collection. The population on these total is, there's 26 of this one, I believe, graded, and five of that one graded, total graded. And it's impossible to grade these. A lot of them had chipping for some reason. I don't know if it's the box they came in or what. This one has a little bit of chipping along that bottom edge. That's dust, sorry. But see the little bit of chipping right there. Um, the front's perfect on both of them, though, right? The front's perfect on this one, but there is chipping along that edge and along this edge. So I don't know really what if I paid fair on these. I've seen that it looks like in this condition I could sell them for about 100 so I think I paid fair. But since this is his first Topps card and this is the Topps collection one instead of the regular one, it makes it more rare, and I believe that they might be something to grade, because even if, you know, you can get a 7 on this one and an 8 or a 9 on this one, I think it's something that is will still make a decent amount of money on, because it's his first tops card. And here's some decent stuff. Okay, I got this for 80 It was just about fair on it. There's a few more scratches. That's all in the case. That's not on the card. But there's, a, like, one scratch on the card that I didn't see. Um, but other than that, it's pretty clean, and I, so I feel like it's worth about 80 to 100 bucks in this condition, but I think his stuff should just really continue to go up, be in really low population, and this being the refractor. So yeah, I picked that up for 80. This one was 40 or 60. I spent 195 on this lot and 250 there, so I spent, what did I spend that day? Yeah, four forty-five is what I spent on everything you're about to see for that day. Um, this goes for sixty to eighty. A ten did quite a bit. It, it, this looked to me like it would grade a ten, which is hard on a clear die cut. There's a little spot there, but that's not really like a bend or anything. It's just where this was stamped into the card and being a clear plastic card, right? It shows through to the other side, so that's a pretty sick card. This was a whole two bucks. I think the last one did like eight to ten. Just a nice deer and fox rookie. And this is actually a really thick card. I didn't realize it whenever I seen it in the case. But I got it for two bucks. Um, a DeAndre Ayton Obsidian Preview. This was four bucks. And I think it does, you know, five, ten bucks. And being the Suns had an amazing year this year, I thought it would be good to pick that up. This is a Lori Markinen optic rookie, so you know, like his stuff is really cheap, and this is a pretty clean copy. It might be a nine because of centering, but it was a two dollar card. I don't know if I'll grade it, but rumors are that he's a when he's gonna be a free agent this year that he wants to play with the Mavericks, 
and I think that would set them over the top and that could give a real boost to his cards. So for $2, I'll pick it up. Um, this one was three bucks for a deer and fox hoops rookie. It's not worth more than that, but it looked like it would grade a 10 and I'm in the Kentucky area. So I think it will sell well around here. I'm an Alvin Kamara rookie. This does about 10 bucks, which is what I paid for it. None of that's on the card, it's just on the sleeve. Um, this looks like a potential 10 copy from all the cards I've graded in the past. So I think probably that might be one I'll grade. This one is a cool card, Russ Westbrook. This was three bucks. So, you know, it's something you'll sell for five, six bucks. But I mean, you know, it's about percentage. Like I said, you know, if you can double your money on every card, even if it's two, three dollar cards, you're doing good. Another Ryan Tannehill. This one was four or five. I can't remember exactly. Not a huge card, but an X Fractor from the Platinum set from his rookie year. And these were just kind of some random plays that who knows, right? They're not really worth what I paid for them, but it was why not? So, an on card auto out of 299, three color patch, and a patch sticker auto out of 99, both rookies of Giovanni Bernard. So Tom Brady loves running backs that can catch the ball. And Giovanni Bernard is a running back that can catch the ball. They got him this offseason. Apparently he's going to be a third down back. But all it takes is one player getting hurt for him to have a huge game. And just because he plays with Tom Brady, his cards could see a jump. And, he, you know, the thing is, like, I'm not looking for a huge jump. I have $8 in them, right? I mean to jump in selling for $15, $20 a piece and you three extra money. And that's huge returns on cards like that right so that's what we're looking to get out of those um then we have this was once the dude in the hobby and out of 70 robert griffin the third triple threads auto so number out of 70 this was five bucks and i was like you know some people collect some of the best college players ever and you know he was considered one of the elite college players of his time and so I looked it up, and the last one of these did about thirty bucks. So I figured, if you know, if I could sell for fifteen bucks, that's double on your money on a card like that. That's again not huge cards, but it's not always about the big cards. Um, this was three bucks a Parrish Campbell out of one ninety nine. He's come back for the Colts. They get Carson Wentz. You know, if he has a good season, this could be something you sell for ten fifteen bucks for being a rookie card. And then this, I paid $5 for. It's a Peyton Manning jersey. It's not numbered or anything, but being an earlier year jersey, I just felt like, hey, the card's in about perfect condition. Like, that's on the, that's not on the card or anything. Five bucks. I think they said last one sold for like 10 bucks. It's not really worth a whole lot more than five, but being a game worn jersey and an earlier year in great shape, I just feel like in my area, I can sell it for 10 bucks without a problem. And then the last card, so this card I know I overpaid for, but I was okay with that. So the cheapest one on eBay was like 260 or best offer. I believe for 270 or best offer. A nine did sell for around a hundred bucks so before his prices went up, but the card was also not listed the right way, so that didn't help. And this one to me was in perfect condition, a hair off center, but in perfect condition otherwise. So I paid 250 for it. I do think it's probably only worth 150 to 200 but I know it's a card I won't see. I expect his stuff to go up over time, and this is something that I don't plan on selling, probably. And if I do sell it, it'll be long-term to make money on it. But it is a Rob Gronkowski out of 399 X Fractor Top's Finest Auto, or Top's Finest. I don't know why I said auto. I was looking at the autos, actually, just before I filmed. This is why. Um, Top's Finest. So... His Topps Chrome, which is obviously the premier product, that out of 555 graded a nine went from like three to four hundred just a couple, just a month or so ago to like thirteen hundred. So the one of these that sold about a month ago did like a hundred and a nine, but that was too cheap because the way the card was listed. And the cheapest one listed raw is around the three hundred dollar mark and up to like five, six hundred dollars. It's just a hard card to find, and being that there was nothing wrong with the card, I had to pick it up. I didn't want to pay that much for it, but sometimes, you know, long term, if if this ends up being the card, I think it'll be right. And let's say it grades a nine, and it's a seven hundred to a thousand dollar card in a few years, I'm not going to care what I spent on something like that because everything that I buy isn't to flip immediately, right? I collect the cards as well, 
and I'm a Patriots fan, so this will be something that'll I'll just stash and see what it ends up being worth. So yeah, that's the total lots for this week. Uh, we spent, like I said, right at about a thousand bucks. I did get another card on eBay this week. It'll be in next week's video because it just came today. I haven't opened it up yet. And then I bought a pretty big card that will be here hopefully next week. If not, it'll be in the video after that. Um, so be looking forward to that. That one's cost me about four grand for that one card. I got it on eBay. So that'll be in the next video. Yeah, otherwise, we're going to try to get this on the regular schedule. Ugh can't even talk we're gonna to try to get this on the regular schedule for you guys so yeah please stay tuned like subscribe comment below and please provide any feedback that you may have i'll be sure to comment and reply to everybody and follow me on instagram at dyl fitzgerald and the other links are in the description so thanks for watching see you in the next one